Hi there. In this uh, second video in the EPS series, we're going to look specifically at calculating the denominator for EPS, weighted average number of common shares outstanding, under some slightly more complicated circumstances. As you know, sometimes corporations issue a stock dividend. Sometimes corporations may have a stock split. Sometimes corporations repurchase their own shares. All of this affects uh, the denominator of our EPS calculations. So I'm going to go through one fairly uh, good size example with you and you'll see how this works. Now mathematically, I should tell you there is certainly <clears throat> more than one way to do this, but the way I'm going to show you is the only good way. And the reason I say that is I've had students say to me, gee, Rob, I, I don't want to do it this way. I want to do it my own way. I like this way. I like my way better. And sure, uh, sometimes they'll get the right answer. But here's what the problem is. The other way to do this that's not as good, well, first, I'm not going to show it to you because it's just not as good. But second, I've had students do midterms or final exams, calculate this number, do it the other method, and get it wrong. And so far, I haven't even had one student use the alternate math to do this and get it right. So um, it's my strong recommendation that you use this method exactly to calculate a weighted average number of common shares outstanding, even though mathematically there might be one or two other ways to do it. So we start at the beginning of the year with a certain number of shares. So once again, let's start with 500,000. And the question is, how many months do we have 500,000 shares and not more and not less? So this, by the way, is common shares outstanding, not preferred because EPS is only for common shares. So <clears throat> let's just say that on February 28th, not a leap here, I guess, we repurchase 40,000. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna write this here. That's a repurchase, okay? <coughs> I just wanna make sure we keep track. I shall even write, write it here. We repurchase 40,000. So the question now is how many shares are outstanding? And of course it's 500,000 minus 40,000, 460. So now we know there was a share transaction and it went down. Question we have now is for how many months did we have 500,000 shares outstanding? Well, this is all of January and all of February, right? So to the end of February is when this happened. So two months were outstanding out of 12. So you have two months out of 12. Now, let's say that along comes May 1, and we're going to issue 150,000 shares. Now, these numbers are random, don't worry about it, but Here's what happens. We had 460, so we take the 460 plus the 150,000 shares. Now we have 610. We're going to go back here and we're going to say, okay, for how many months did we have 460,000 shares? So this is counting from the end of February. So we're going to go March, April, but not May, right? <clears throat> not May, because this is May 1. So you have to watch these dates, right? End of February to the beginning of May is two months. So once again, two months out of 12. Okay, so along comes, let's just say, September 1, 
and we're going to have a two for one split. Okay, now I think you know what that is. A two for one split means we retire the 610,000 shares and then what we do is we issue twice as many. So if, if a shareholder had 100 shares, we issue them 200 new shares. A company may do this in order to drop the price of their shares to facilitate a more active market. You know, if you get up into the point where your shares are costing, you know, four, five, six hundred dollars, it's hard for a lot of investors to buy a, a block of a hundred. So they could do a two for one, three for one, or even four for one split. So we did a, a two for one. So we're gonna have this times two. And suddenly we've doubled our shares, right? So we're gonna deal with that in a minute. But the question is then for how many months did we have 610,000 shares? So all of May, June, July, and August. So four months. So for four months out of 12, we had 610. Now, last one, let's just say it's um, November 30. And we issue 100,000 shares. So now we have that many plus the 100,000, 13.2. So again, let's just go back and say for how many months did we have 1.22 million shares? So all of September and October and November, three months. So three months out of 12. <clears throat> now this is it for the year. So we had no more share transactions. So from the end of November to the end of December, one month out of 12. So we've been really trying hard to you know, count the months, right? 12 months in a year. Let's see if we did it right. I want to add these up and make sure that we really counted 12 months. Because like, what if we made a mistake here and thought it was five? Well, if we make a mistake here and think it's five, you get 13. And I go, oh, I made a mistake. Let's put that back. So it adds up to 12. That's a good sign. Okay, now, one complication. <clears throat> what I'm about to mention is the same for a split as a dividend. Our, our weighting is way off now because we didn't actually have any change to our contributed capital. Like here, when we repurchased 40,000 shares, our contributed capital went down because as you know, those shares are gone, right? You debited shares. Here, when we issued 150, our contributed capital went up. But here, a stock split is just a memo entry. And if it were, let's just say, a 10% dividend, all that happens with a 10% dividend is you transfer the, the valuation amount out of retained earnings and put it into your common shares account. So through no change in our capital structure whatsoever, really, in terms of contributed capital, we actually um, have way more shares. So because of that, we must restate these earlier amounts as though the stock split or the stock dividend had happened at the very beginning of the year. And that way, everything that we do and all our numbers are representative of having had that split included. So every amount before the split, which again was a two for one split, must be multiplied by two. So under my heading here, stock split or dividend, I'm gonna put two here and two here and two here, okay? Now there's, there's nothing here because this is including the split. Okay, now I'm gonna put this back, but I just wanna mention if this had been instead, let's say a 10% stock dividend, then here's what we would do. We would take this and 
And instead of putting two here for a 10% stock dividend, we would take this and we would multiply it by 1.2. Okay, so I'll just make that, with, put the decimal in there. 1.2 works like this. Sorry, did I say 10%? Excuse me, 1.1. Okay, so the 500,000 is still there. And the 0.1 times 500,000 is another 50, right? So by using 1.1, we just save ourselves a math step. But I would do 500,000 times 2 months divided by 12 months times essentially itself plus the 10%. And this is what we would get. Now remember, it's not going to say 550 because this is only for 2 months out of 12. So I'm just showing you this to say this is what we would do if that had been a stock dividend instead of a split. Now, it was not. It was a dividend. But we're going to do the same thing now. This gives us double the shares. And again, we are restating back to the beginning of the year everything that happened before. So here, I'm going to have our 500,000 shares times two months divided by 12 months in a year, and we're going to double it by multiplying by two, okay? Now, these two lines are the same. They are pre-stock splits. So I'm just going to copy this formula down, and then we get to the point where there, the split had already happened. So if it already happened, we don't multiply it again. So I'm going to take the 1.22 million, times three months divided by 12. And there's our, our weighted number. And of course, this one's going to be even smaller because it's only weighted by one month of the year. But I'll copy this formula down, and there we have it. OK, so when you look at those five numbers, each one is weighted in terms of number of months of the year that you had exactly that number of shares. And you finish with, of course, that many shares. So the easy answer now is to simply add up this column. And the number that we get is the denominator in our uh, basic EPS calculation. So there we have it. That's our weighted average number of common shares outstanding. And you would use that in the denominator for your basic EPS.